In the world of obstacle course racing, there is one race that is the ultimate test. World's Toughest Mudder. A 24-hour grueling race that tests your will and challenges you to the core. There is a different motivation for every competitor. These are their stories. You go easy laps, okay? You finish your easy laps, come back in line. The guys who finish your O course, just crunch out your push ups, and then just go too easy and then too fucking hard. The whole thing's hard. All right, any questions? No, good. All right, line it up. My best ever 702, I went 740 today. I didn't break my best, so a penalty is hit the surf. If I can't do this under the time standard, then I don't deserve to be out here. His, his years of cross country coaching and substitute teaching, all these different things he did, prepared him for this work to mentor these young men in a really beautiful way. I think it's a really important element that he brings to his job, that he understands how the physiology or you know, what you would need to do to train to get up to speed. So, and then he leads by example, by actually doing the workouts, which is phenomenal at his age, I think. I'm Mark James, in sunny Coronado, Southern California. I'm a father of three. Married to a great wife for 18 years, uh, Tanya. You know where my pants are? Yeah, they're in the, they're in the bedroom. Where okay, are your, all right, okay. Where are your boots, honey? When I met Mark, we, I was in sixth grade and he was in seventh. We've been married since 1999. 19 years later, 18, whatever the math is. <laughs> Tanya said you were married 19 years. 19? Well, Did you forget, or you... she's 15 days younger than me and I'm more forgetful than her. We're only born 17 days apart. He likes to joke that he's a cradle robber. <laughs> I was 17 days younger. It's about 19 years, yeah. We haven't got our, I think, 20 years, the Tupperware. I forget how it works, but we haven't got our Tupperware. We're still on paper, <laughs> so. Uh, you got your Shirt, shirt, wallet. Mark and I start our day at um, six. A while ago, I decided, you know what? We need at least one window in the day when we can talk to each other. So we get up at six every day and we walk the dog with our coffee. But that way we get to see the sun come up together and the dolphins over there. It's really beautiful. A couple minutes, tell each other what we were dreaming about. And then um, one of us, we usually divide up, divide and conquer with getting the kids to school and buses. I pour my heart into the children and then I get to write poetry and I teach a poetry class. Mark is working full time and then he's also one of these people who can't sit still and has to okay. keep working and training. So Tough Mudder was beautiful fit. We're harvesting the second part of our life dream together, which is raising the kids and still doing what we both love. I had priorities in my life. And number one is family. So family and then work. Um, how can I incorporate my training to accommodate those two things? I work eight to 10 hours a day. Well, if I can run to work, that's four miles out of the way. And then that's four miles coming back home. So I'll do that three days a week. If I can swim at work, I have the ocean. I don't have time to go to a swimming pool. So I'll put on maybe a wetsuit or if it's in the summer, I'll get in the ocean and I'll swim a half mile to two miles 
sometimes on my own, or I'll get a kayak during lunch and I'll kayak. We try and get out as often as I can, so if we can get out on the weekend, ride for school a day like today, it's best in the morning, early, six or seven, when it's flatter with some nice motion to the ocean and waves. But uh, yeah, it's like it's a paradise. I don't know where all these came from. They've actually been in a shoebox for a while. You know, when I finish a race, I get a medal, I'll wear it around for a couple hours, maybe I get a free beer out of it, and then it kind of goes right into a, a shoebox. So when I open these up and I put these all out, I'm kind of like, wow, where do these all come from? And it's like a flashback of history. There's a lot of great memories. I had a scholarship, a potential scholarship offered to me, but in that time frame, I decided to join the Navy and I went to see a recruiter and I saw this poster of these guys skydiving and running around with telephone poles and uh, in the water scuba diving. And I want to do that. And so that was a big inspiration to do something that was just very difficult that not many people could do. And then I tried out for the SEAL program. I finished, uh, I think 26 out of 150 guys finished in my, my SEAL class. And I did two deployments, winter warfare. The reason I left being a Navy SEAL was primarily because I had this other dream. I watched the, the Iron Man triathlon on television. I was very inspired. Training that these esoteric triathletes were putting in at that time, eight hours a day or so, was still absolutely unheard of in the rest of the world of sports. And believe me, just a short 10 years ago, it would have been an enormous leap of faith to imagine that now thousands of people have actually changed their entire lives just to be able to finish this extraordinary event. And I thought, hey, I can do this sport, I can make a living at it, and got out of the, the service, and I pursued a career as a triathlete. I got my pro license. I did the Hawaii Ironman 10 years in a row. I stopped doing Ironman triathlons in about 2001. The, uh, Tanya and I had our first uh, child and training really was on a hold. Three years ago, I was coaching a group of individuals that were trying to get into Navy Special Warfare and the guy I work with said, hey, you're gonna go up with these eight guys, you're gonna go do a Tough Mudder in Lake Tahoe. So I towed the line with these eight guys and started with a mile up a hill. I'm like, okay, this is a solid workout. And we stayed together as a group, and by the fourth obstacle, I was hooked. I've always been uh, big about goal setting whenever I go into a race. I have three goals. A goal I can achieve, a goal that I hope to achieve, and a goal that'd be really cool if I achieved it. So my reason for doing Worlds is really redemption over last year. And this year at Worlds, the big goals are number one, the easier goal, the goal that I know I can achieve is go for 24 hours and get 50 miles. My middle goal is to hit 75. I want to go there at that silver bib. The third goal would be to go hit that silver bib dirty. At least about a mile plus, get it go 80, uh, win the Holy Grail series, which is a combination of tougher and toughest points. You know, there's a lot of loyal Tough Mudders out there that, yeah, and I'm one of them. Hook, line, and sinker, I want it. So right now I'm in the lead for the Holy Grail, but it's just that idea, I'm, I'm, I'm competitive. And that's something that I think that I can win, even at my age group. Worlds is, in my opinion, the world championship of obstacle course racing. It's that big granddaddy event. I want to go there. I want to race with all the people that I know. I want to do my best. I want to push myself. I want my family to see me out there. And I just want to get it done. It's one of my favorites, Rodney Strong. This is part of my daily ritual. Uh, where is the cheese grater? Oh. These, these races are extremely important. I 
did triathlons for 15 years. I tried to make it as a pro triathlete, but I never made it, and I never really felt truly immersed in the sport. So what do you guys think about your dad doing tough letters? It's cool. Yeah. Have you seen him do it yet? Uh, I mean, I've seen, I've seen some footage of him. Kelly, are you going to do a Tough Mudder with me this year? Yeah. In SoCal, probably. That's about three hours or two hours north of here, up in Lake Elsinore. Tanya said, hey, I want to be part of this. And the kids want to be part of the world's experience. I don't know if they're, they know what they're in for. That's 24 hours of dealing with dad who might not be so happy and be grumpy. But um, uh, like I said, I, I, hopefully I'm not worrying more about them than they are about me. Because it's a long day, especially as the night wears on. Uh, every Sunday we do a family hike. And sometimes we'll put our weight vests on and we'll go kind of a brisk pace. And I think we're just building. The older they get, the more they can do stuff with me, like the obstacle course, run, swim. I, I almost can't keep up with them on the boogie boards. Yesterday, they were just getting wave after wave. So they keep me young. I try and show them a few tricks, and uh, it's fun. These logs probably weigh about 65, 70 pounds, a little heavier when they get wet. It's a kind of a very vicarious thing of like family bonding time, I guess. I don't think I realized that I'm the age I am until I start hanging out with some of the guys that I went to high school or college with and seeing what they can't do and seeing how they're having their hips and knees and ankles replaced. I tell my students when they graduate, I say, hey, continue taking care of yourself in your 20s so in your 30s you can do what you're doing now in your 40s and then 50s and that was my speech 10 years ago and I still say it today. Back when I was in my 20s, I thought 50 was over the hill. I'd have a little walking stick and it'd be over. But I'm still doing a lot of the things I like to do. I still hike, I still swim, I'm still out on the boogie board. I, there's nothing that I'm really not doing that I, that I could do before. You know, my hair fell out. I can't see. My iPhone, my text, I gotta have big text on there, but I'm still, you know, kind of getting after it. And I wanna just go into that race, just relax and um, above all else, have fun. And that's sometimes hard to do when you're being hard on yourself or competitive, keeping that fun factor high. Mark, he's doing what makes him happy. So I would rather have him do it to the fullest as long as he can. And I, he will, I'm sure he'll be doing these races for as long as he can. <laughs>